I would like to first of all welcome everyone in the room and online to this session. En el espíritu del Foro Económico Mundial, también quiere decir que. I would also like to add that the World Economic uh, Forum and uh, this uh, meeting is going to be bilingual. I will be talking English, but panelists will be speaking Spanish. Um, with me, we have Alberto Bello, the editorial director of News and Business News of Grupo Expansión. We also have Daniel Gomez, who is the head of competitive research at the World Economic Forum. Alejandro Cardoso, who's the chief executive officer and president of Publicis Communication based in Mexico and manages Latin America. And least, last but definitely not least, um, Ivan Sanchez, who's director of regional strategy at Densu Aegis Network. Today's conversation will be, have a backdrop of the launch of the digital media readiness framework produced by the World Economic Forum Global Agenda Council on the future of media, entertainment, and information. So I now pass on to Alberto to speak on this framework. Hola, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. So let us start by, you know, discussing what we're talking about. Hola, soy Germán, a Chilean blogger, came to Mexico. Uh, the, it was very welcomed and massively received, and the daughters of several people at the newsroom were surprised the fact that a uh, Chilean blogger was being so successful in Mexico speaks of a, of a uh, radical change in the way we communicate. Uh, bloggers' uh, production costs are very low, but we're also seeing Mexican and Brazilian uh, producers producing for Netflix. We are seeing a phenomena how, like Mercado Libre, or Amazon that become regional platforms. We're seeing Spanish media like El País or the New York Times uh, launching Spanish online versions to compete with local uh, dailies and also uh, advertising campaigns on the social media, particularly Facebook, uh, are unbelievable. And we're seeing uh, other campaigns that the, the social media is changing. And they, they all have something in common, and that is being called the World Economic Forum by media information and entertainment. And uh, the framework we are going to present tries uh, to measure the, or rather to compare the levels of readiness uh, in digital media of different communities, be they uh, countries, cities, or regions, in, uh, I mean, the readiness to adopt the content, product, services, and the apps of these uh, digital media information, and how ready is everyone uh, to profit or make the best of the economic phenomena resulting from these goods and services. This initiative comes to life in November 2012 in the GAC Summit, the Global Agenda of WEF, in November of 2014 in Dubai. And it also has the participation and collaboration of the Akeo University Japan and the University of Southern California in the US. The methodology we'll be talking about whose consequences we'll be discussing in greater length, it has four major components, has 23 indicators, some are existing, others are new indicators, that to try to measure these skills I was talking about. It, has, it also assesses and evaluates gaps between indicators and other indicators in the Global Competitiveness Index, and in short, this is a methodology mapping the relationship and interdependence of each indicator and fourth case studies revealing the importance of this assessment framework because this can include the use of digital books in schools in Japan and how that is going to change 
education and in Chatanu, we see how a society changes its economy once it's become digital. We also have the Mexican national digital system transforming the way a government relates to customers. Mpesa in Africa and Kenya that has turned cell phones into a method of payment outside of the banking system or Shikan in China, which is a distant healthcare platform. And these are just a few examples. Uh, so let's delve, delve into this. Why is this relevant in, Amer in Latin America? And what is the importance of being prepared digitally to measure this? Well, thank you, Gilberto. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I feel that this work comes at a very important time for Latin America, particularly because at this juncture, we are looking for new uh, economic uh, or engines for economic growth, uh, given the uh, falling prices of commodities coal, oil, other commodities, the region is seeing a significant economic meltdown and the time has come to transition economies, once based in extraction of resources, to a knowledge-based economy. So what this conceptual framework does is provide a tool for policymakers, yes, and industry to better understand the factors and institutions that will allow countries to develop these new sectors for job creation, new sectors for driving growth, and new sectors for reinventing our economies and uh, implementing this productive transformation. One of these sectors that has been most affected and will continue to be affected is that of government communications, brand communications, individual communications. At Publicis, Alejandro, you have your own view of this aspect. So how do you see this framework? Earlier today, I had the chance uh, to lead uh, a working group discussion on uh, Latin America's uh, tourism and business uh, position. And we said that this fourth revolution, the connectivity revolution, will have a far reaching, a far more reaching effect than the, the uh, previous revolutions. First, because of uh, the pace w at which this change has taken place and will continue to take place, and its overall uh, scope, how it's affected the lives of people and government agencies as well as private and private organizations uh, you know we are all connected uh, with everyone at all times and this fourth revolution has uh, meant that the entire ecosystem and organization change radically and uh, get on uh, this monumental change another thing is that this change in the uh, communication industry and uh, marketing has forced companies to understand several phenomena. One is the multi-screen phenomena. Today, it's a reality that the consumers aren't just exposed to information and entertainment on one screen. There's a Garner study that reveals that today all the millennials in 16 countries have uh, are performing four activities simultaneously while they consume information content. And by the year 2020, there will be a 20.8 million electronic devices connected simultaneously in the world. And the scope is unbelievable. And that forces organizations to understand this as well as the journey and the consumer's behavioral patterns. Another very important factor is the merging of technology and creativity in the world of communication for many decades. We were always based on a strategy and creativity model. And now, just like advertisers and media have found ourselves forced to introduce other criteria different from our own industry, science and technology, and that alchemy of science, technology, and information entails a fantastic challenge to us all and for brands. And I would like to close by saying that precision marketing, that ability to understand one on one, the behavioral pattern of a consumer, not just in clusters as it's been done traditionally, men and women in the 20, 30 age group with X income is something of the past. It dies year, died years ago. So the ability of media, private organizations, and institutions to 
map the behavior of every consumer, not clusters of consumers, and establish one-on-one -on -one relationships thanks to technology uh, with a great uh, supporting ideas behind it is the future. Very well. I mean, this uh, obviously is a triumphing in Latin America and other parts of the world, but that obviously requires a series of uh, public uh, policy decisions and attitudes by uh, private enterprise that uh, facilitate access uh, to and accessibility as well. One of the things that uh, President Santos and President Markey have just mentioned. So, Ivan, how do you see this? The truth be said, regulatory bodies by definition, must know the object uh, of their regulation. That's the starting point of the problem because the, the Internet and the digital world is a uh, form in constant expansion. Internet and digital uh, cannot be encompassed, and that's why regulatory bo uh, bodies find it so difficult to de pinpoint what to regulate. And this has uh, positive and negative uh, aspects and implications, mind you, because it creates a certain cow chaos when there is no regulation. Then creativity is uh, stimulated, as is entrepreneurship. Uh, the you know disruptive uh, technologies like Uber are the result of this. And if you know we look at it, Uber when they come in, they're not looking for technology talent. What they need is uh, PR, PA people, you know, who know public affairs, who know how to relate to governments, who can devise uh, a uh, normative uh, framework to be legally viable. So, yes, regulation could encourage and stimulate uh, lots of cre uh, creative people and entrepreneurs. The negative side is that in the absence of regulation, there is no standardization. So if uh, I have a company that has a strong digital component to it. I go to customers, and customers may not know how to measure my results, and they don't know whether what I do in digital media solutions is good or bad. And there we start having problems in business terms. And a way out to that negative aspect is to be, you know, perfectly honest and simply say that uh, technology is moving at a faster pace than politics and to engage more technical people who know how to deal with that uh, constant development in the digital world. A wonderful example is uh, for the former minister of technology in Colombia, Diego Molano. He was minister until last year, had one of the most important administrations in infrastructure terms. He had his technical background. It was very easy for him to understand the importance of assisting people who have digital businesses. OK, I'd like to clarify that those 23 indicators I mentioned and make up this methodology or framework are divided into three main areas. One is the environment uh, capability, which is uh, infrastructure, and the other is use. And that's how the indicators have been distributed, uh, so you understand the makeup of this indicator. If you allow me, could I make an additional comment? Yes, of course. Talking about Uber is a wonderful example, because you know there are others, Airbnb and Netflix, uh, have created a new business model, uh, a new. Uh, business model based on platforms and no longer on goods and services. And to the extent we understand that phenomenon, the brands, the media, and we can better connect uh, with consumers, uh, restructuring and redefining uh, the company's business model based on this uh, concept of platforms where technology is key. It's not uh, simply a matter of adding on the business strategy uh, to the digital component. No, it's the core. And say and the user experience is fundamental as well. This concept of uh, having historically based companies on the strength of a brand as the core pillar, as the axis. Today, the key factor determining the strength of a brand isn't just its uh, 
communication position, but the brand ability to relate constantly and consistently with consumers. You guys can keep talking about this, and it's a fascinating subject, but I just want to make sure that we have the time to for questions. Does anyone have questions in the room? Yes. Uh, Marta Ortiz, director of El Periódico. Marta Ortiz, editor of El Colombiano newspaper. I have a question for you. Three weeks ago, we had the pre-launch, a preview of a book where he said that behavior has changed in respect of technology and the need for capital has also dropped. Joe, I asked him, you know, and where is the regulation, where is the law? And he said, regretfully, the law will never come because it will never have uh, the ability to come. As you said, when I look at a business like Uber, which is the one you've u chosen as an example, I don't think that's such a big problem because the Uber business model is... Uh, simply giving a different use to existing tools. The thing is, no one was prepared for it. But when we look at copyright and former Minister Milano didn't do anything in respect of that part of the regulation, he may have done a lot of things in dissemination and people understanding technology and disseminating it, but he didn't do much in the area of regulation. When we speak of copyright, things that are pure common sense, that's where I'd love to see whether the study can help us, because that's what it worries me, you know, in the dark social, nobody speaks of the dark social, it's there, and this is something we will have to discuss eventually. Yes, and this is one of the points, Danielle, I was going to ask you what the role it plays in the framework is. Let me give you some detail. The work emphasizes the demand side and content generation, which is where intellectual property is going to be very important. The framework identifies a series of specific indicators that are not in the global technology report of the forum. That has to do with the quality of the regulation. It's, it's not the quantity of the regulation, but rather a far more agile, uh, dynamic, uh, regulatory framework, less industry specific, but a framework that is more flexible and allows us to incorporate these uh, new platform-based business models. Uh, the framework gives emphasis to platforms. It also attaches great emphasis to the existence and the ability and the ease of creating those platforms. And another very interesting aspect in the framework is called fair involvement which is what uh, has to do with intellectual property uh, or copyright, uh, you know, and the respect for intellectual property. So the framework does uh, present a, a structured view of this, and I agree with Ivan. The regulation will tend to always lag behind technological development, hence the need to have, you know, quality regulation that uh, will be far more flexible and can adapt easier to all these uh, new realities uh, of the market. Uh, we organized a meeting with several industry players, both uh, phone carriers, uh, media, editors, uh, Facebook, and this to analyze this, because this is key. I mean, you can ask me, how do you measure it? And I am a journalist, have a question. When are we going to see an indicator ranking countries in terms of who is more to less ready? That's a very clear challenge. What the indicator does is to take existing indicators, and that's on the supply side, which is the availability of infrastructure, the supply of infrastructure, the use of coverage. All that has been very well measured, but the side of the demand side, content generation, how easily accessible, I mean, can the population population engage uh, in the development of this product is something that isn't as well measured. So the challenge is to implement the framework. So there are a series of indicators that are very well measured, while there are others that we are going to have to go out and look for and incorporate. However, the conceptual framework is there. The theory is there. The rationale is there. The uh, indicator framework is there. And now it's a matter of finding new ideas uh, to measure it. I mean, some ideas go along the lines uh, of, you know, 
ideas that are from uh, culture to digital media, or how easy is it to censor content. That's another key aspect. Because what we've seen with the network readiness indicator is that you can have all the infrastructure in the world, but we don't see the uh, development of sectors because maybe you don't have content in uh, local language or there's no relevant content. So how do you go about matching the demand for content uh, with the supply or inf uh, physical and institutional supply for sustaining all that content? Is this report going to be available? That's a tough question. Esa pregunta está muy buena. No, That's a very good question. Evidently, yes, I do believe that the forum, we just launched the logo information technology report. The new one will be launched in two weeks. We've been publishing it since 2001. You can do benchmarking. You can do follow up and track the progress of countries in terms of coverage, readiness and uh, usage. Those are the three areas we measure. And we are currently in the process of reviewing and revising the frameworks. And I believe that this uh, work uh, urges us all to work on the other side of demand and uh, to try to incorporate it into the new uh, version of the report. And. Uh, we will most likely have it ready by next year. I won't commit to a date, but we will hopefully have it ready by next year. That is our project, and that is, that is the overall direction, which is equally important. Good afternoon, Adriana Molano, director of ColombiaDigital.net, and I have specialized in technology for development. What is the perspective, how you are understanding the digital divide? Because we know connectivity and infrastructure is one thing, but another very different thing is when actually people are using and making the best of this. These are two different measurements, very complex, even more so when countries like Colombia in, and specifically Medellin, we have uh, video gaming, uh, Maquila, 3D gaming, Maquila, but uh, there are other sectors in the city and the country are disconnected and have uh, no digital knowledge. What happens there? No, it isn't, I mean, connecti connectivity isn't everything, and that is the essence of this framework. You need culture, education, access, accessibility, uh, as well. A wonderful question, and we are very much in line. The World Bank produced its annual report called the, the Digital Dividend. No, the digital divide. So we must, uh, or it looks at the importance of understanding what the uh, leads to the proper development of new entertainment and industries, digital industries, to develop the industry, the sector. And there is a very important human capital aspect there. These are the human ability to interact with the new technologies and the existence of content. So we have to think about how to generate a more appealing and attractive uh, content because you may have uh, connectivity and you don't know what to use it or if you don't have relevant apps uh, for your day to day. But that's uh, an issue. But there are some very interesting examples in the uh, developing world. In, in Africa, there are agricultural apps that can give you in real time the uh, price of the good, you know, what is the price there of at this or that market. And uh, with the refugee crisis uh, from the Middle East to Europe, it's unbelievable to see that uh, they are using uh, mobile phones and for uh, web access and uh, social media to connect uh, to their physical uh, networks uh, in the host countries. One of the refugee explained at this meeting that uh, at the high of his fear was the moment between uh, Turkey and Greece when there is no coverage in either place. That is the, the peak point of fear. I mean, they're in a barge, they can you know capsize it, but that doesn't scare them. Uh, they're scared that they don't have web access. Uh, and I think then that uh, their challenge is to generate content, content with the relevant tools for the people. 
supplementing what Daniel has said, I think it's equally important to make room for the data discussion and for it to mature, because maybe right now we are focused too much on you know the theory of numbers and my being tracked and what have you. And there's a fear that can be actually unfounded, because this will translate into benefits for users. Naturally, there are laws like the habeas data that will assure and secure the identity of consumers, but for these platforms that we evolve, we need to migrate this discourse of I am being surveilled to I am being, they are getting to know me to serve me better. Yes, and obviously they can provide a better service like Amazon, you know. It's been a fascinating conversation. Um, I just want to take one last statement from Alejandro and Alberto, and then we will be closing the conversation. Solamente tomando esto porque me parece central la brecha. En la medida en la que los gobiernos y las organizaciones, que son las que producen y ponen a la venta los servicios del consumidor, los productos y servicios, entiendan que se requiere de nuevas capacidades y el desarrollo de diferentes habilidades para poder hacer frente en esta nueva en esta eh, revolución a una nueva realidad de mercado eh, creo que estaremos en una mucho mejor posición más allá de la infraestructura de la tecnología del ancho de banda eh, hay que es un paso anterior en el que muchas de las organizaciones con las que yo interactúo debo decirlo a nivel mundial lo han entendido y lo han hecho pero muchas otras que nos sorprendería están muy atrasadas. Creo que es el paso central, el desarrollo, entender esta nueva realidad y desarrollar las habilidades y las capacidades diferentes a las que estábamos acostumbrados en los últimos años. Pues nada, yo simplemente pues concluir que estamos todos esperando, Daniel, que salga este reporte y que podamos ver los países y en cada indicador cómo se comparan unos y otros. Eh, hay un, mucho trabajo aquí, les, les invito a que, a que lo yo creo que ya lo pueden ver este paper si este, si está disponible este ¿no? paper va a estar publicado cierto y cre creo que ya está, eh, yeah. disponible, ya está disponible que lo revisen y que es y fascinante cómo un grupo de personas y de diferentes industrias se sentaron a pensar una forma de medir qué hace posible que en un país salga un Uber o salga un, un Netflix o salga un bueno estoy yendo mucho a Estados Unidos pero salga un Waze, que salió de Israel, claro. o salga o un Carol, Mercado que... Libre, que salió en, en, en Argentina. ¿Qué hace posible que eso suceda? Desde el punto de vista tanto de, de, la, de la oferta como la demanda, es un, un framework fascinante. Les invito mucho a que lo visiten, a que lo vean. Y yo invito mucho al Foro Económico Mundial a que le dé seguimiento y que muy pronto tengamos manera de medir todos estos indicadores. So, Muchas gracias, Adam. Thanks again to all of my panelists and all of you online and in the room for participating in our press conference. Thank you.